right, and with that epic end to the music, whoa, hold on a second. Not to continue to give them up to Grin for rush by the Sejuani. Gets herself out of harm's way for now, but Nunu's still going to try to chase it in, trying to look for the CC lock. Stuns up the Sejuani. She's dropping low. Nunu ultimate going to be committed to try to finish her off. The TP coming in from the Orna as well. That's going to be Darius TPing on the backside. Mergana goes golden. The chain's not going to do that much. The Orna are going to be knocked straight into the members of Grin. They are dropping like flies as the shots from the Jinx picks off the Kaisen with the zap. Takes down the Galio as well. Triple kill for Traxxon. Somebody mentioned in the chat that he's got to pop off this game. And when you quadra on the Jinx, that is exactly how you just tear this game open for the side. All right. I, uh, I have no clue where that came from, but y'all got to listen to some hype. <laughs> from yesterday's games. Enjoy the audio track from yesterday's games. Welcome! I'm Jay Kelton, joined by Smartest 2 for these quarterfinals games between the Amateur League Invitational. And if you thought that was hype just from listening to it, you can be sure that once we're actually in-game and you can see what's happening, it's gonna be even more hype than that. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. This game's today, right now, is a best of three between Scum Gang and Poro Snacks, which if you were hanging out here yesterday, Poro Snacks were the team that made it out of Group D as Scum Game was able to make it out of Group, I believe it was A. And so from what I have heard, I did not see all of EGN's games yesterday when they were streaming, but I heard that Scum was pretty strong and definitely enjoyed their fighting as uh, everyone was wrenching. There was some bloody games, so I'm hoping for some bloody games today as well. Yeah, so, I mean, both of these teams seem really evenly matched. Uh, you know, jumping right into the bans here, I'm not at all surprised to see the Rek'Sai ban coming in at all. I know it's, I know it's a champion that Amen plays quite a bit, being his most played champion of the season. Uh, Silas being most picked up by... Uh, by Rosen there, and it, we've seen how much Silas has been doing in the current meta, you know, being played in MSI, things like that. Such a contested pick. Kaisa being another target ban. The Nidalee is an interesting ban, though, because Nidalee is not someone who's necessarily super powerful in the current meta. Kindred being another one of those oh, team fight denying champions, and Nautilus being another really powerful uh, champion right now who can be flexed top, mid, or support as the server gets locked in for Scum. Yeah, and the thing I like about Sivir is that when you want a strong ADC in the bottom lane, Sivir's a fantastic option because of that spell shield. When you think about ADCs, you want something that you can kind of counterpick, you want to be... It's a lane, it's one of those lanes that needs to be dominant, you want it to be successful as the game progresses, and when you're blind picking an ADC, it can be pretty stressful because you don't know what the other team can pick, and it's the very beginning of the game, so you pick the super safe Sivir, she's got that spell shield, she's got that extra movement speed with her ultimate, She's going to be able to do just fine in that laning phase. Good wave clear, just all around solid champion. And it's responded to by Poro Snacks with the Jinx and the Braum. That Jinx especially a champion that came out in yesterday's games. Very, very strong. It even got banned against them in game number two against Uwu Kruwu. At least the ones that we were watching on stream. The Jarvan and the Tarek combined by Scum Gang for their picks in the final phase of the... Uh, the, the final for the pick phase... <laughs> Um, I like the strength we, on those tanks. Go ahead. I know. I was just saying, you know, we see the J4 getting locked and J4 being another one of those characters who's, who were in the current meta where it's, you know, heavily contested in the early game. You know, every team wants to try and get as much damage as they can early on. J4 is one of those characters that can excel there, getting a lot of good ganks down. Uh, the Sivir first pick I want to talk about later because it's an interesting choice to show that super early on, especially when, you know, some one player like uh, Akash look, look for people like Jinx, who's the most played character. Uh, lots of lots of top lane bans coming in against Scum here. The Kled and Urgot uh, responded by from, from Scum with the Kha'Zix and Zin when Sejuani's already locked in. So really interesting ban choices here. Yeah, banning away junglers. The enemy team has a jungler already pretty interesting. You could maybe make an argument if Sejuani was flexed to the top side, which she was played occasionally way back in the day, probably two years ago before the season was kind of in that realm. Uh, she's been pretty much a solid jungler, and as I say that, Lee Sin gets locked in by Poro Snacks, so maybe the side of Scum Gang knows something that we don't know, and that is a Sejuani in the top lane, Lee Sin jungle, or maybe flip-flopped. That's some flexing that he could do. 
yeah, and I so I do know that J O uh, J U T K uh, likes to go for a lot of unconventional top laners. You know, his top characters being like Volley Bear and Tom Kench, as well as a Sejuani. So I guess Scum did a really good job reading the Sejuani pick to know say, oh, that's actually top in Sejuani and banning away junglers. And I mean, it was a really good read. We see the Lee Sin getting locked in here. So, I mean, they knew exactly what was happening. The Darius and Orianas, I like the Orianas. They have the ball delivery set up really well. Scum's team comp is coming along really, really well will as the Sun gets locked in for Poro here. Yeah, so with that, we will see all the final champions being locked in. Uh, and we are ready to go for the actual picks and bans, which means that once we're into the real picks and bans, we can continue to break these teams <laughs> down. But one of the things I'm liking from the side of Poro Snacks is their crowd control. Brahm, Sejuani, Lissandra, all these champions, excellent at being able to lock people down. Incredible amounts of CC, especially not only with the stuns, but you can layer the Lissandra and the Sejuani ultimate. And normally you think of, okay, one of these champions, if you have one of them in the game, needs to find the right pick on the enemy carry. Well, when you got two, let's just drop Lissandra's auto Noriana. Let's catch somebody out with Jarvan or Tarek with the uh, Sejuani ultimate. It'll be fine. We'll just CC the entire enemy team in a big wombo combo of AoE damage. And uh, pretty powerful stuff there. But that means they are heavily reliant on this Lee Sin and Jinx, as well as obviously Lissandra for um, the damage to carry this team. They really need to be the team that has that edge because when you're looking at the side of Scum Gang, they have massive potential in team fights specifically to just destroy. With the Darius, his repeating ultimate, the Orianna Shockwave, Sivers, Crit, Boomerangs bouncing through the entire enemy team, they have some really strong fights v5 play yeah and i i do like how you mentioned uh you know you were bringing up this thing where poro sort of re reliant on their jinx and lissandra for damage output uh primarily just jinx right lissandra is a character who can look to possibly 100 to zero a single character but sivers are really hard character to 100 to zero with that spell shield being available and oftentimes you know whenever you see lissandra on the team especially you know a brahm sejuani lissandra qss is an item you can expect so it'll be really hard for Lissandra to 100 to zero any key targets on Scum, I think. So they're really tunneling a lot of their damage up onto Jinx. So if Scum is able to you know, read into that, say, okay, if we shut down this Jinx, it's going to be really hard for them to execute their composition. I would really, really like to see J4 putting a lot of pressure bot side this game. Because if they can shut down the Jinx, they shut down the enemies, they shut down Poro's team comp, essentially. Because if they don't have any damage out from Jinx, they have the CC, but they have no damage to follow up on. Yeah, that's exactly right. When you, you, you when you look at the side of Poro Snacks, you shut down the Jinx. Who do they have left? Potentially the Lee Sin and the Lissandra. However, Lissandra, if she doesn't get her claw off, her mobility goes to zero. She's burning flashes or she's dead. There's no other way for Lissandra to get out. Lee Sin, on the other hand, high mobility champion, but not exactly the most consistent with damage. He's looking at bursting people down, trying to find some assassinations, maybe insect someone into the rest of the team. But there's a reason why Lee Sin is the one who's actually doing all of the damage and getting all of the kills himself it's because he's reliant on his team to help him out in that area so with j4 focus on that bottom side that's going to be pretty strong for scum gang if they can pull that off and keep attention down there keep in mind though with that sejuani locked in for most likely the top lane at the side of poro snacks that is a massive amount of cc and you could have lee sin try to trade that focus from the jarvan to the top side and darius also not exactly the most mobile <laughs> champion darius is a i kill you or you kill me and if lee sin is consistently gaking on that top side could make darius's life pretty difficult I completely agree with you there. The one caveat I'll throw in is that in a lane of Sejuani versus Darius, I, as a top laner, would not want to be the Sejuani. Right? You have Darius who has built-in armor pen, bleed damage, and is 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 you know known to be an anti-tank, a tank buster. I think Sejuani, like you know, they were able to get the counter pick top lane, and I think that'll be pretty crucial there. Uh, it'll come down to a lot of mechanical plays but as far as the lane goes Darius is going to dominate that lane mm -hmm. right and if you look to the mid lane the Oriana versus Lissandra right Lissandra can't isn't going to be able to match Oriana's push once Oriana comes back with like the lost chapter they're both going to clear the list fairly quickly but Lissandra has should be able to get to other lanes quicker she should be able to clear the wave and rotate I want to see both of these mid laners playing to Rome 
Yeah, exactly. But especially with Orianna, Shockwave, Lissandra, Glacial Tomb. That is that CC ultimate that you want to have when it comes to roaming and skirmishing in those fights, especially in the early stages. Now, later game, sure, Orianna can hold off, wait for Jarvan to try to Cataclysm in and get a big four or five man ultimate with that Shockwave. But in the early game, you're not going to be necessarily looking to decimate that mid lane. You're going to have the ability on both Orianna and Lissandra to wave clear quickly. And if you can time your move movements through the river, be joined by these high mobility junglers like the Lee Sin, like the Jarvan, you should be able to pull off some pretty interesting ganks either on the top or bottom side. Yeah, absolutely. But now, taking a second to look over the team composition for, uh, for Scum here, they have a lot of options, right? They have the Darius J4 Tarek ultimate, right? If you have, once the Tarek ultimate goes down, Darius is free to just do whatever he wants. It's it's kind of scary. You see an or you see a Darius and J4 run at you with ball delivery on whichever one of them with a Sivir ultimate to speed them up. That's that's pretty intimidating. It's gonna be hard to get away from. Now to my point earlier, if Jinx does find the lead, it's gonna be so hard for Scum to shut her down because they have the such wanted appeal. They have the Lee Sin appeal. They have the Lissandra appeal and the Brom appeal. Brom's one of the best peelers in League of Legends. Yeah, so I'm exactly. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play these team comps out. We'll see here in just a minute. Now they've gotten all the champions locked in. Let's go ahead and roll through the champions and their players. But before doing that, I do want to make a mention to the people that are currently in the chat, kind of going, what is going on? Uh, it is a PG stream. We try to keep that. So please, no F-bombs or anything of that sort. However, I'm thinking that for today, we're going to go ahead and allow some of those scum chants to come through for you guys. So that way you can support the team that you think is going to be able to win this game. Feel free to throw in some hashtags into that as well. For now, starting on the side of Scum Gang, which is uh, getting those chants in the chat, Spooner Juan with the Darius on that top side, always there with the Jarvan in the jungle, and maybe will always be there for those fights. Rosen on the Orion in the mid lane, Subhuman Garbage, that's a name, on the Sivir in the AD carry role, and Homie, love that as a supportive role playing the Terra. Absolutely. And now for the side of. So, Porsnax is. I thought Porsnax was on the. Poor Snacks is on the red side. Yeah, okay, so Poor Snacks on the red side. So yep. for Team Poor Snacks, we have JOTK on Sejuani top lane. Excited to see how that plays out. A-Man Lee Sin, or A-Man on the Lee Sin jungle. Trish or Lissandra mid lane. Akasha 75 on the Jinx AD carry. And B -da Mana on the Braum. I love that name, B -da Mana. B -da Mana. I B -da like it too. It's all right. So we're running through those, looking at the compositions as a whole. I definitely feel a bit more favored to the side of Scum Gang, simply because when you look at their composition, it's a bit easier to play as a whole. The ease of execution is definitely there. Sivir just going to be sitting back, throwing out those auto attacks. When in danger, it's not like a Morgana um, Dark Binding that you have to make sure that you absolutely spell shield, otherwise you're guaranteed to be dead. It's a bit more typical of, oh, okay, I see the Braum ult coming in. Let me go ahead and spell shield that. Plus, anytime Jinx drops those flame chompers, she can toss on that spell shield, get a little more mana back for free. Good stuff there. And is especially safe with that Tarek. His stuns are going to come up a lot faster than Braum having to set up those Kakusa Blows stacks. So overall, I think that from Scum Gang, they should just play these safe lanes, not really concern themselves with trying to shove in, grab those turret plates or anything crazy. Just play a solid safe, wait for those level sixes, and that's when they can start to group. They can use that TP on the Darius. They can use the roaming Orianna to bring some serious power to skirmishes or 4v4, 5v5 fights. Absolutely, but I really want to see, you know, just continuing that forward. I want to see always there looking to, like I said, that bot lane. I want him, I, I, in my, if he's able to shut down the Jinx, I think he has succeeded as a jungler. Right, whereas now, you know, we talked about the win conditions for a scum gang saying, okay, you know, if they they just if they just play it slow, you know, they scale super well, they have the Sivir, they have the Darius, they have the Orianna, they have the Tarek to help with all that. They scale super well, just play it slow, you know, don't need to rush anything. Whereas for Poro Snacks, I think it comes down to, like I was going before, a lot of getting Jinx a lead. If once Jinx gets that lead, they should be able to snowball that super hard. They have Braum, they have the Lissandra, they have Lisa, they can set all these plays up. Uh, I think that they sh they need to play the team, they, they are playing the team fight, team comp. 
right? Right. You're not going to have Sejuani contesting Darius in the side lane at 25 minutes in, unless Sejuani is just, you know, super far ahead and Darius can't do anything. And, and if they're evenly matched, Sejuani is just going to get absolutely demolished by a black cleaver Darius who could just sit on top of her and just mow her down. Well, and that's exactly what you're saying with that Darius in the top lane. That's where for me on Poro Snacks aside, I want to keep really close eyes on A-Man's pathing, this Lee Sin. Does he decide to try to help that Sejuani in the top side deal with the Darius? Or does he decide to try to take that power somewhere else? I also very much want to see him keeping eyes on the Jarvan. You were just talking about the critical from the side of Scum Gang, using that Jarvan to find some strengths in the bottom lane. So if he can follow that Jarvan around, keep eyes on him, he can be there to respond when Jarvan goes in, adds an extra little bit of damage, as well as is going to be that member that can get to the squishier side. Jarvan in the early game doesn't deal that much damage, so he's going to be reliant on the Sivir or the Yoriana to actually find those kills. He just brings the CC. If Lee Sin's there, though, excuse me, I got a Sonic Wave. I'm straight on to your Sivir or Oriana, and I'll just solo them out um, by myself while the rest of you guys are having a CC party around the Jinx. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the counter ganks are always super crucial. You know, usually the jungler who gets her second has the advantage there, um, which is why I don't want to see Lee Sin. I, as much as, you know, you, you, you hate to hear it, I don't want to see Lee Sin looking top super frequently. Because if it comes down to a 2v2 situation, a Darius plus J4 definitely has the advantage over Sejuani and Lee Sin, right? J4 having the, the flag and drag combination to CC someone down, Darius having the pull to bring someone in, the damage output they have between them, the shields, the attack speed buff, J4 provides Darius, allowing Darius Darius, Darius <laughs> to get the stacks down is it just makes their 2v2 really synergize really, really well. All right, for all of you that are just coming in, welcome to the stream. This is Excellency Shoutcasting, and we are hosting the Amateur League Invitational Tournament. Today is the quarterfinals, so this is going to be a best of three between the teams of Scum Gang and Poor Snacks, and you've tuned in at the right time because this is game number one. Both teams feeling a little bit tentative to do anything crazy, so they come and hang out in all the uh, proper places around the River Lee Sin. Get a little bit aggressive stepping forward, seeing what he can muster up, but I want to check in very quickly as we were checking yesterday as well. These first drakes can be pretty critical. Not going to be super critical today. It's just a wind drake, maybe allowing those junglers to find a little bit more movement. Whoever picks that one up, they're going to try to chase in onto the Tarek, but homie is able to walk away for now as that Q from Braum missed. Yeah, a little bit of a late invade there. And I was kind of wondering, you know, Poros next composition is just so devastating on an invade. They have the Braum, the Lissandra, the big Lee Sin, who's super strong level one, even the Sejuani, who can be really powerful level one, at least in a team scenario. I was I was really surprised to not see an invade coming in from them. You know, they're really they really respect respecting Scum Gang here. So, you know what? We're just going to five point play it safe. We don't want any shenanigans going on level one. All right, well, with that even, clean, simple start to the game, both junglers going to be, well, excuse me, I saw the uh, Braum and Jinx, but they were actually protecting the blue buff, making sure that Scum Gang was going to try any invades. Both junglers are going to be picking up the red buff, so we could potentially see some vertical jungling. There was also a pretty early red ward on the side of Poros and Nax, going to catch sight of Jarvan walking through the uh, lane to the top side of the map, and I actually am frozen for just a moment. And I actually like how Poro Snacks' bot lane uh, chose to not show for uh, for a while to try and you know prevent prevent Scum Gang from getting that information of knowing where a man is starting on his jungle path. You know, both Sejuani uh, and uh, the bot lane Jinx Braum showed to the lanes at approximately the same time. So I like that coordination coming out of them, you know, not giving that information right away. The ward that's coming oh, dropped, hold oh, on. Wait. Braum going to be going in onto the Lee Sin. a man, a little bit of trouble. He's got a little bit of help with Lissandra coming up, but I don't think it's going to be fast enough. He's going to flash the Oriana ball, the claw from the Lissandra just to slow everyone out. So Lee Sin gets out, but he did have to burn that flash. So a little bit of cost to him for that invade. And it's always surprising how much attack speed the Dimation Standard gives. You saw how fast he was just whacking Lee Sin with the, with the, tri the flag. Hey, Amen. So, I mean, it, Go that ahead. red, like, when it has the red on it, you're just, you're just re proccing the red so quickly. So it's, it's devastating in a 1v1 scenario like that. 
Yeah, so, and with that, though, he decided not to go back, instead headed to his own blue buff, making sure that he stays up when it comes to the jungle pathing. The J4 going to be a little bit ahead and still has his flash available, but the flash not super critical for the very beginning game ganks, so Lee Sin should be able to just keep farming until that flash comes back up before trying anything, and Sejuani on that top side, you can see, already starting to suffer a little bit. Down in CS, she's got a wave to catch, though. We'll see how much of this she can grab. Yeah, I'm, I actually I don't think she's going to catch much of this wave. She will, looks like she is going to get quite a bit of damage down though, but it's Darius, so that bleed's going to start coming in. That's, pretty, pretty powerful there. That's the problem with the Darius and bleed is that even if you win out the beginning of the trade, as you're walking away, those bleed stacks are just going to keep poking, poking, poking. Even though Darius isn't around for them, and you keep losing your health. Ooh, apprehended backwards. This might be first blood going over to Spoon Juan. Beautiful play there, just continuing using that harassment. Is a little bit of fight in the mid lane. Little Sandra down to about half health. So is Amen. He was trying to make something happen, but the Oriana is here. J4 forced to flash. The Oriana has got the damage. However, the shield she's going to flash, but not quite. Oh, get out the moment. Lissandra just around the corner flashes for, but oh, the cube no. misses. And the oh. shield as well was down for the Oriana, so they might be okay. Lee Sin, a man, gonna come around from the side, see if he can maybe make a play. He's gonna decide to back away and say go for the Raptors. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, if, actually, I don't, actually don't know if that Lissandra Q would have killed even if it didn't connect there. Uh, just because the shield from Oriana didn't come in at the very last second there. Well, either ways, a bunch of flashes burned. The Oriana and Jarvan both burning their flashes. Lissandra burning hers. Lee Sin still about halfway before coming up off of that cooldown. In the top lane, Sejuani was considering trying to go back in after TPing back up their full health. However, that Darius able to get out. Now going to TP himself to rejoin the fight and has a small advantage in items and they completed those boots already. Well, he's tier one boots. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just, you know, Point to like the fight that happened in the top lane. It was exactly as expected, right? Dar Darius's kit just allows him to deal with champions like just running in top lane so easily. Ha you know, Porsex getting or sorry, scum game getting that counter pick is so crucial on the top side of the map because it means that always there doesn't need to put any pressure up there and can focus on shutting that Akash on the bottom. Yeah, and that's what he's gonna do. Coming to the bottom lane, the flag and dragon to find the knockup onto the dink. She's gonna flash, but the exhaust is slowing her down. She drops the flame chompers, catching people out, but the boomer ring flies back through and subhuman is gonna pick up a second kill for scum gang and i love to see that because you know we were talking about it before that's exactly what always there needed to do if silver gets a lead here and, and jinx gets shut down i i just i i think it'll be really really hard for personax to execute on their composition because at this point i mean always there is never going to need to come to the top side of the map Darius is perfect, like not, especially now that Darius has Noxie and Guillotine available. I mean, what, what can Sejuani possibly do to him to win a trade? It's just not going to happen. Just stun and run. Now, to be fair, when Sejuani teleported back to the top side, she caught up in farm, though she's starting to get down a little bit more as this wave is moving forward, and Darius is kind of getting control over it. Thing to note on the bottom side, the Jinx, even though she went down, also burned the flash and the heal, so J4 could just go right back to the bottom lane and do it all again. Darius getting a little bit of damage out of Sejuani. Lee Sin's coming in here, though. They found the stun. The ultimate comes out. Goodbye, Darius. J-O-T-K picking up the revenge kill with the help of A-Man. Yeah, it was a good pick there in the river to uh, you know, guarantee a safe gank there. So to everything I just said, the one factor in that is Darius knows he's stronger. So it was a really good bait by J-O there saying, you know what? I'm going to be super confident here. I'm going to just... Nothing's going to happen. here. just going to back away. I'm going to pretend like I'm going to fight you when I know I'm not going to win. I know, oh, hey, by the way, A-Man's here. Good night. Good night. That CC chain from Sejuani, pretty darn powerful. And make sure that that Darius, even though he had the ultimate available, he had some of the tools, had flash as well, just couldn't use any of those to get out when your CC locked for a good bunch of seconds. I want to check in. I... Oh, go ahead. You know, the one thing I will say though is that that can only happen for so long. Once Darius builds up some base stats, you know, completes the Black Cleaver, maybe gets for either for Stair Axe Trinity, however he chooses to itemize this game, I, I think he will be able to win that 1v2 eventually. Lissandra in that mid lane. See if she can grab a root onto Rose and throws out that ultimate. Lee Sin is here. The Shockwave way mispositioned by Rosen. 
goes down, maybe hoping that she could get that orb on herself. But the problem was that ultimate from Lissandra. You're stunned up. You're CC'd. You can't get that orb and move it when you are stunned. So with that, that's another kill. Back to Poro Snacks, evening up the kills and the gold. Yeah, a bit of a late cleanse there from Ron there as well. If, if, if he had used that cleanse a little bit earlier, might have been able to get away there. Um, but I, again, I like where always there. This is where he needs to be. It's like I keep saying. And Jarvan coming to the bottom side. We'll see if he can find that flag and drag this. No flash on the Jinx. Easy peasy. Sivir even getting around the Unbreakable by the Brum. And they find themselves that free kill once again. But now you have to start to wonder, with that Lee Sin picking up the kill on the Orianna, and with the Sejuani being able to kind of even things up a little bit on this top side, Jar Jarvan is going to have to make these ganks in the bottom lane on Jinx count even more. Because sure, you're shutting down one member, but you are sacrificing the rest of the map for it. Absolutely, but I like that combination, you know, with the, with, between Always There and Homie. Putting the stun onto J4 as J4 jumps in, guaranteeing a stun. Oh wow, just another free kill. A little bit of an overstay there by B to mana. He may have had the mana, he didn't have the health. And uh, we just see Spooter just going to shove this top side of the map in. I want to see him get a little more vision down though. Actually, he's getting a lot of damage put onto him by JU here. Oh, wait, he there it is. He's going to go down. Are you kidding me? That's the CC chains. Sure, the bleed stacks are great, especially when you stack up four or five of them and then drop that ultimate, executing whoever it is that you're fighting. However, the problem is you can't do that damage if you're stunned up. And again, JU shows proficiency on this champion, layering it one after another to perfectly execute that and find another solo kill. Well, the only solo kill so far. Good flash of the Shockwave is still going to find a kill. Always there, picking up his first kill of the game with the assist outside of Raisin. Yeah, and I do want to also... Um, Rosin. Though, is Rosin! Item I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Itemization-wise, uh, Sejuani did have Bramble for that fight, which I think could have mm. been a very deciding factor there. Cutting down Darius. I think Bramble was a really smart itemization path for Sejuani here. And taking that into consideration, one thing we didn't talk about before is Sejuani... You know, although I, I keep mentioning how powerful Darius is and how he has the advantage in this matchup, Sajwani will be allowed to primarily just build pure armor, right? Not having to worry about the Orianna too much, because even though Orianna will do a lot of damage, it's not as though Sajwani is going to get 100 to 0, right? So maybe Sajwani picks up a Spear of Massage later on, but Sajwani can t it can, is perfectly happy going, you know, Ninja Tabby, Thornmail, uh, Righteous Glory, or Randu, and something along those lines. Oh, the least they're going to come back up. It's a sore spot for Scum Gang. Darius can be taken down to about half. However, they don't find the stun with that. I believe it is the W from the Sejuani. So they're going to back away. But again, they're keeping Spooder Juan playing on his toes in that top side. As he's currently 1 and 2, the score line. Still even CS with that Sejuani. I want to note in the bottom lane, the Sivir being able to be up at about 20 CS over this Jinx. So the pressure from the J4 started to work out, but he might die as another blue invade attempted. And the boar rush over the wall with Sejuani should be able to take down always there. In the meantime, the ultimate should drop the Lee Sin. He is going to fall. Fight in the bottom side, not going to mean that much as this fight on the top side is going to continue. Darius stun up, taking down low. Spooder Juan on the run, but there is an Oriana continuing to deal damage. And she's gone. No mana. She cleanses out of the Lissandra ultimate, but Rosin has no damage and now will have no health as well still trying to escape there's the cc from jo just slowly walking down the robot turning her into spare parts they might turn on to the scuttle crab or sorry not the scuttle crab they, um the rift hero but nope they go separate ways and the fact that rosin didn't have shockwave was so crucial there right not having them enough mana to pull off the entire combination in there that if if shock was available it might have been a turn fight yeah, just rough, rough stuff there. When you've got that ultimate, but you just can't use it. And without that mana, again, Orion, there's certain champions that play around their mana pool, but they can still throw land auto attacks as well. I could think of like Lucians that a lot of the time they're like, oh, I can't, or Ezreal's. I can't hit anything because I don't have any mana. Well, excuse me, you have an auto attack, it's fine. Orianna's auto attack, just not gonna mean that much. Without that mana, without having backed recently, just led to disaster on the top side for Scum Gang. They're definitely not out of the game yet. They're actually about a thousand gold up for them. But that fight definitely going to make them reconsider when they're trying to group. 
Yeah, it looks like you know we do see Scrub Gang starting to put more vision towards this dragon. Uh, I like how they finally secured vision around that top side of the map. It was just uncontested before. The one like little side piece I want to add on is A-Man has tried to contest every single one of Scrum Gang's blue buffs, mm -hmm. and it has not worked yet. The last fight wasn't was not a blue buff contest. It was a top side map that carried in the jungle, but it didn't start with a, with a blue invade. So I I'm just it's just I don't know why he keeps looking to try and steal the blue buff when he's tried twice and it just has not worked out for him at all. Because if you keep repeating the same thing, it's bound to work eventually, right? Eventually. It's not the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and getting the exact same results. I don't know what you're talking about. In the bottom lane, it's a 30 CS lead for the Sivir, plus 3 and 0, oh, with all the pressure from that Jarvan in the bottom side. That is massive for Scum Gang as that kind of backup for the later stages of the game. That Sivir is going to be tearing Poro Snacks apart if they can't land the CC. So keep your eyes on what happens after the landing phase ends, which should be happening in a little bit as we are getting to that 14 minute mark. The Sonder ultimate gonna be on to Raz. However, Lee Sin's here lands the kick into the Sonic Wave, and that's gonna be a robot once again going back to the base to get rebuilt as the Darius on that top side still hasn't been able to leave the lane, even if farm with Sejuani, not able to do that much. Nice move there Ooh. by Sivir. Oh, Braum ultimate oh. gonna find the knock up. Hold on, there's the ultimate from Tarek. Everyone's invincible for just a moment. Beat the mana dropping low. The Braum has to back away, but Lissandra is going through everyone. The Sivir though, tears oh. one, tears two. She's gonna clear all the members of Poro Snacks. The Jinx has the, the gank though. So that stun from Braum, absolutely critical. Triple kill to the Sivir, but in the end, Akasha wins out the fight and the game still stays perfectly even. It did end up being a three for three, but you know that IE being completed on Sivir was so crucial. We saw that I was on the fight based on the top side of the map. Scooter Juan down to about half. Sajuani, so yeah, you don't want to go underneath the turret there. <laughs> yeah, Sajuani so does have a lot of um, sustain now with Spectre's cowl because every time the bleed damage comes in, you know, it gives Sajuani more and more sustain. So she's she, it's going to be hard for uh, Darius to win the attrition war. Uh, Darius does need a couple more items before he's going to start outscaling. Uh, people also often forget that Darius' pull has built-in passive armor pen, percent armor pen. So as his levels, as he uh, starts putting points into it, uh, starting you know, like level 13, Oh, as J4 is top now. Oh. Oh, I don't know much can happen here. Always there, finally finding a gank on the top side. Nice side step by the Sejuani and Jayo with just a little backtrack is able to avoid the CC and get out for the moment. Oriana is also on that top side, which means the pressure allows Poro Snacks to head to the bottom and grab themselves a wind drag. So they are gonna grab the first neutral objective of the game, but it'll probably be traded over as Scum Gang has the J4 and Oriana on that Rift Herald. This has been pinged out by Poro Snacks. They haven't made any movements towards it just yet. The Sejuani slowly walking down. The Jinx ultimate gonna come flying in. They're gonna get vision. They landed on Rift Herald. Might have been a little bit different there. Lissandra ultimate gonna force J4 to go in. He's gonna get stunned up for the moment. The Braum is right in his face. Eagle's got nowhere to go. In the meantime, Sejuani's also gonna track down Oriana. Take her out of the equation as Subhuman is gonna try to turn onto the Jinx. However, with the double buffs the Jinx picked up earlier, she's gonna be incredibly strong, forcing the Sivir back down to about half health. Sivir, or sorry, Sejuani gonna take that blast cone over the wall to get to the blue buff, and the fight kind of falls apart from there, but man, Poro Snacks with a great collapse. Yeah, 100%. And now, interestingly enough, you know, we talked about how for Poro Snacks, oh, you know, they need to play around Jinx, they need to get Jinx ahead. Uh, the, the way the game has played out, it has been now Scum Gang, who is now forced to play around Sivir because of how much of a lead Sivir has gained, now being 6-1, and one, right? Having a ha having such an immense gold advantage, you know, being up thirteen hundred gold on the Jinx, it's it it should be if they group as five, I think Sivir should be able to mow through the enemy team. Well, a little bit of crash, this teleport from I'm the Sejuani. She's still gonna go in anyway. Find this stun. She doesn't have the ultimate available. Lee Sin. Oh yeah, don't end underneath the turret. That would be unwise. Also though, would be doing Lee Sin things. The Taric Ultimate Cosmic <laughs> Radiance is back up and available, so keep your eyes on that when that next major fight breaks out. Yeah, absolutely. And I want, and I like how Lisa, you know, we now see Lisa starting up the uh, Rift Scuttle here. But I would like to see, okay, so I want J4 to go check the Scuttle right now. Or not Scuttle, uh, Rift. I want, they, they need to know that, hey, the, all of Poros Nax is rotating to this. They must know that they're on this, but they have the tools to contest it. 
But oh. they, they, just, they just let it go. Yeah, J4 walks in just to watch it fall. Lee's been able to secure that, and now they could drop it in the mid lane, try to secure themselves that mid tier first turret. At least it's good to go and ahead and back with it. Go ahead. Don't now, if if you are scum game here, right, where you have a you know number on the board, you are down gold. I think that that was the fight to take. You have a Sivir with IE and rapid fire cannon before Jinx had her IE. She just now went back to base and purchased the IE. They would have decimated that fight. But they, for some reason, they're just super scared to take these fights, uh, you know, these 4v4 or 5v5 style fights. Nine kills to 11,000 gold lead for Poro Snacks, but still fairly close. And, and in theory, the laning phase hasn't truly ended. Only one turret has been secured this game. First turret going to Poro Snacks on that bottom side of the map. But most of the rest of the turrets are still up and still have some pretty good health to them. And so the laning phase continues to draw out as we're closing in on the 20 minute mark. Whoa! Lissandra taking the claw. Forces out the early flash from Orianna. She didn't have cleanse, and I don't think she, or I think she was just playing it safe, even though Lissandra may have just been baiting that flash out of her. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it's sort of a rinse and repeat story where every single time Lissandra goes in, CC someone, Leeson follows up, and it's a guaranteed kill. Like at some point, if you're coming, say, okay, you know what? We, we just need a group. Our Sivir has a 50 CS lead at 19 minutes in. She's strong. <laughs> oh, well, and that top lane, Darius going to be stunned up. A little bit of poke CC. However, he's going to be trying to come right back in. Oh, the slow, though, from Sejuani, making it difficult for him to land that Q. Yeah, interesting, Go also, ahead. interesting pickup on the chain vest from Darius. I wonder what he's going to opt to build that into. I don't know if he's going for an early GA or what exactly he's planning. Because if Darius is aiming for the side wave push. He's got a Ruby Crystal. He could be going into a Randuins. I'm not entirely sure what he's looking to build here. Nothing he's building out of that will help him in the Sejuani lane, though. I think he needs to look for either more of a Titanic or a Trinity here. As Baron is now on the map as well. Let's see next dragon being another Cloud Drake as well. We'll I think if you... No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we'll see where they decide to actually oh, take this pressure with the Rift Herald, because they're going to drop it in the mid lane. They're not going to try to use it for anything else crazy. They're going to instead head right on in, see what they can do, taking down this mid lane turret. It's down to about a quarter health after that Shelly charge. However, she should be cleaned up pretty quickly. Not the best use of Rift Herald, but Lee Sin may have just been trying to pull Scum Gang together for a bigger fight. They're feeling like maybe they have that advantage when it comes to those items, so they might have the advantage in a full fight. There's going to be started up. J4, though, ult can't get his Cataclysm down. The Braum ultimate. Glacial Fish are going to catch out the Darius. However, the Cosmic Great is going to come down, keeping everyone alive for the moment. Lissandra all going to be healing. I, Trish back up for just a little bit. The fight continues. Health bars are dropping little by little. Homie on the run. He's split away from the rest of this team. No one dies through all of that damage. Mostly due to the Tarek ultimate and Lissandra being the subject of most of Scum Gang's damage. She just healed herself back up with that ultimate. The Windrake started up by the Lee Sin, and everyone just resets around the mid lane. Yeah, it was a beautiful combination by Rosin and always there. You know, getting that four, like three, I believe four man shockwave there. Unfortunately, subhuman wasn't positioned to get the damage oh, on. Oh, they're going to find the CC chain, the flag and drag knockup by J4 into the Tarek stun. Sejuani will be able to Arctic Rush away, Arctic Assault, excuse me, away to live for now, but they found themselves one on that Lee Sin, and now they're going to try to go forward again. Little Sonder ultimate stuns up the J4, but doesn't do that much. And now Poro Snacks has two Cloud Drakes. They're going to be able to rotate so much more quickly. And I just, I just can't help but question Subhuman's positioning in that team fight. There, you know, after Rosin and all was there, this tower. Quick note: this tower's dead. 
Yeah. No one's surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> the siege eventually worked for Poro Snacks, and that's sort of the thing, right? <laughs> they dropped the Rift Herald, they rotated towards the river, they tried to go for a team fight. it didn't work out so well, but they didn't overchase. Well, excuse me, the uh, <laughs> Sejuani and Lee Sin overchased just a little. Didn't. Yeah, exactly. Three out of five didn't overchase, and even one of those was able to escape, but the rest of the team were effective at being able to take that pressure that was being made inside the jungle and just continue to poke away little by little, and eventually they are rewarded with that third extension your turret absolutely and i think i i like to see the uh center hole coming out of j4 here i think if j4 builds and i do see the black cleaver coming in but you know if he opts instead for a full tank sort of build and plays initiation j4 i think that it will really set scum gang up for a lot of plays in the future when if j4 doesn't have to be afraid of dying instantly he can just jump in whenever he sees an opportunity because it's not as though the side wave, the, the 1v1, is going ideally for scumming, right? Ideally, Darius should just be winning flat out against Sejuani. But Sejuani, you know, has been playing it super well, itemized super well with the Thorn Mail. You know, is won basically the lane early on with the help of A-Man. At this point, I think you, you say, okay, Darius, just keep Sejuani in a side wave. Don't die to her. Just keep it in the side wave, and we can win this 4v4. Absolutely. I gotta give credit to that Sijuani for that build. Might have to do it in a moment, though, as Lee Sin's gonna be caught for just a second. The rest of the team trying to collapse from Scum Gang. They're not gonna fight it, though, as Lee Sin hops himself away to the Brum, kind of shielding each other a little bit, as bros do. Uh, the Sejuani building that thorn mail not only is critical against the Darius but also the six and one Sivir. When she goes to step forward, if she's auto attacking the Sejuani, she's going to be having a hard time. What a perfect way to make a big tank out of that top laner for the side of Poro Snacks. The only one she has to worry about is that Oriana, in which she is building the Spirit Visage to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the one thing, another thing to keep in mind though, is that you know, we're, give some credit. Rosin has been landing some beautiful shock. Oh, as the fight breaks out. Yeah, the Braum ultimate only going to land on one, though. The J4 tries to go in onto Trish. We'll see if the Lissandra can live through this one. Cosmic Radiance is down, but it has been delayed, delayed, delayed. Lissandra ultimate keep her alive for a moment. Darius goes in. The shockwave onto the back line, but Jinx is still alive. And now Akasha can throw out the super mega death rocket. Take down the Darius. The zap onto the Sivir as well, dropping her low. However, she is still alive. It's the two carries, the squishies, the Sivir and the Oriana alive with the Tarek in this mid lane but they only lost to Lissandra for that fight. 2v1 to the side of Poro Snacks, and now they could potentially try to turn onto the Baron. They're instead going to look for a Fnatic Brush. They're seen, and so we'll see what they decide to do next. Yeah, and you know, it really was J.O. just zoning out three members of Scum Game guys. Baron doesn't start up, but it looks like it won't be contested. Uh, three, you know, it, the fact that J.O. Oh, wait, no, they are moving towards it. They might try to contest the Sivir and the Jarvan coming out from the base. However, be the mana in. trying to be that front man, try to push the many members away. Sivir's coming around. The Darius is just running on, and they're looking for it. No, oh, the Sejuani will be able to smite that uh, Baron down. The flashes from over the walls to get away as well, and everyone besides the Braum, the sacrificial lamb from Poro Snacks, they get out with four members on Baron. And only Akasha had to use Flash there because Sejuani was able to jump over the wall mm. and Lee Sin was able to just jump to the Sejuani. But the mobility, you know, really coming in well for them there. They will lose. Well, hold on. Lissandra's still going to try to fight this one out. Are you kidding me? She's still going to be dropped. So it's a one-for-one -one trade at the moment. The turret shot going to be dropping the Tarek low. The Flash for Flash is Lee Sin trying to see if he can take down Tarek. But he's starting to get a bit tanky with that Knight's Vow. Making sure the Sivir stays up. Lee Sin Q's going to miss. But with that mid lane turret going, no, it didn't actually go down as Lissandra delayed long enough for the rest of the team to come in to defend. The side of Poros Snacks could turn onto this next Drake that's coming up. Yeah, the third Cloud Drake, which Ooh. would make them, which would really have them running rather fast. So, I mean, like, you kind of, I mean, but you, you can't contest it though, right? Like, you're, you're, you're so far behind. At least, more specifically, you have nothing that can actually deal with. The Sejuani yet, right? Who's who has a Thormail and Ninja Tabby, even though Sivir has a Lord Dominix, can't do enough damage to Sejuani yet for to meaningful these team fights. You see Ju just zoning three members out, living with almost over half the HP before we able to walk out of the team fights over. They need to have more damage on the Sivir and more damage on Arasmus before they can deal with with Ju, which is exactly what I was saying. I want Darius to keep 
say in a side win. That's exactly how Scrum Dan can win, these, win this game. This Sajwani might punish him being in the side lane though. Drops him down to about two thirds health. In the meantime though, the rest of the team pushing into that second tier turret in the mid lane are gonna be able to secure it. Jinx just so good with that Gatling gun. Pow pow to just take down those turrets. Everyone ignoring the control ward in the brush like you do. Who cares about wards? You've got kills to have. And so in the bottom lane they go. Looking for the Darius. Goodbye as he's going to fall. And now the problem with the Glacial Fisher gonna lock down the J4. He flags and drags for a moment. Lissandra ultimate gonna drop him for a bit. The Cosmic Radiance from the Taric to disengage the fight so far, but the defense for the bottom lane turret has now been started up. Sivir's wave clear is starting to stack up. She's got three items, so she can clear out those minions pretty quickly. Look at the crits that she is pulling out. And that means the poor snacks have to rethink their engage here as the Sejuani has moved towards that mid lane. Yeah, and even though Sivir, you know, is definitely one of the best champions in the game in dealing with uh, waves and playing waves quickly, you see that Subhuman isn't able to step up at all here, right? Because there's so much threat of getting just deleted by an engage, CC engage. Like, they don't have a... The problem is, is when you pull... They need Darius pulled in the side wave to deal with Sejuani. But J4 is not tanky enough yet to act as the front line. And I love this choice from the side of Poro Snacks. They're keeping that Sejuani. Split pushing on the top, middle side so that she can grab an inhibitor. No, she's going to back away Good at the moment as... A great kick out of the Lee Sin just knocks the J4 back into the team. They did not get themselves an inhibitor, but man, if they started to crack open the base of Scum Gang and put themselves at a nice 6,000 gold lead, they can sit back, get buy some new items, wait for that next Baron to come up, and potentially secure that top lane second tier turret, the last one outside of the base for blue team. Yeah, and you really have to give a lot of credit to Amen there because if all if if J Four was able to find the Cataclysm there, that could have spelled a lot of trouble for Poro Snacks. And again, as the game progresses, this Sivir will eventually just wipe team fights if she doesn't get CC. Eight, one, and one with three and a half completed items so far. She is a monster. The problem is she can't step forward confidently enough to actually start to bounce all of those critting boomerangs through the enemy team. Soon. If they find the no one fight, no this still is that opportunity for the side of Scum Gang to come back in this. We're at that 30 minute Soon. mark where those uh, cooldowns on the death timers are pretty long 30 seconds pushing those 40 second death timers so we'll see if they can find that choke point give server the opportunity and the peel to just sit back and throw all those auto attacks look at just how fast these members are on poor stacks are moving with a triple cloud drake but you really have to give them a lot of credit for how they played this game even though you know we talked about how their team comp was designed to play around jinx they've been perfectly fine just playing around the fact that we're just tankier than you and have more cc than you you don't have enough damage to kill us. And it's just not going to happen. That's the thing Our about the CC. Everyone's got an opportunity to go in, find some of that, something to lock the enemy team down with. And they are going to back away for the moment around this middle inhibitor. The Sejuani going to join forces as well. They know that they don't have to fight Believe this, but they're kind of just poking away, seeing where they can find a small you know, pick potentially as that Baron is still a good 30 seconds away from coming up. The J4, though, going to be calling forward with the Sejuani. However, the Orianna ultimate is only going to land onto one member. Cosmic Radius is coming down, but it's so late. The Sivir's been able to take out the Lissandra, and now with the Cosmic Radius, she can freely go forward, auto-attacking everyone. Double kill there. The Sejuani is finished off the J4, but he's playing that tank line perfectly. There's the triple kill for the Sejuani. Is it gonna be the pentakill? <laughs> Who got the end to kill? I didn't see. Who got it? No, it is! It's a pentakill for Sivir as Subhuman comes out massive. That's the exact fight we were just talking about for some gaming. They waited forever, and they made the call, and now they can just walk straight through the midline. They've taken down one turret. They're taking in the second turret. There is 30 seconds on every member of Poro Stacks. They've got a win Ways to go before coming up. We'll see if they get in time to defend that mid lane inhibitor. It looks like Scum Gang oh, decided not they're to go the crazy. Baron. They're gonna instead turn onto the Baron that is spawning right now. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're talking about. We just need always there to get in, get the cataclysm. And the most crucial part of that fight was Subhuman deleted Trish before it was able to get Ultimate off, Zanya's off, or anything. Lissandra was deleted from the fight Believe before it even started. Future. 
Oh, the Sandra is here, though. The Baron is only down to about half. This is going to be a, a very crucial fight for Porus next to try to get back into this. The Sandra has to le flee the base. She's going to go right back in, throw down that ultimate, but the J4 gets the Baron. We'll see how the rest of the fight comes down. The Cosmic Radiance from the uh, Tarek has been used, trying to keep the team alive for this fight as the J4 finishes off the Brum. This is Juanis into the back line. Tanking, tanking, tanking. Is it going to be enough? The Jinx is free shitting. Oh, free hitting. That is a four-man ultimate out of the Oriana. Rosin destroying the health bar but the rest of the team is still going to keep chasing because she only has the Tarek who already back to try to defend the base as Poro Snacks with Jinx being untouched that fight find themselves a win in turn. Yeah, so I mean, again, I really have to sort of question a little bit of the uh, target prioritization there from Scum Gang. We saw a subhuman just wailing on JL for like half an hour every single Sivir auto being on the Sejuani, who was just taking like 50 to 100 damage per hit. Nothing was happening. I think if you know, if you, if, when you play that fight out, and normally, you know, when the Sivir copy said, let's play this front to back, you have to ignore the Sejuani in that situation. You have to move past the Sejuani and say, okay, delete the Jinx, delete the Lissandra, and then what can Sejuani do after that? Mm-hmm. That's where Sejuani, when you look at the build, sometimes Sejuani's built a little bit of damage mixed into the rest of their tank lineup. This Sejuani is 100% tank. It only cares about jumping into the middle of the fight and being, I'm a big target, focus me. And that worked perfectly for the fight around the Baron as it's what looked so bad for the side of Poro Snacks after that penta kill by Subhuman in the end when they fought around the Baron wasn't effective. I still think that they might might have made the better choice to just go for at least cracking the base of Poro Snacks because that would be something that they would have to consider when it came to a potential later fight around the Baron. But they didn't do their homework, they didn't do the ward coverage, and they rushed a Baron that in the end ended up going okay as they got the Baron, but more kills to Poro Snacks and in middle inhibitor. Yeah, and at this point, you know, you have a full build Sivir. You need to start funneling as much gold as you can onto Oriana. You want your Oriana to get strong now. We saw even when that fight went south, again, Rosin landed a four-man shockwave off cooldown at the very end of that fight. Oh yeah. If if Oriana had more itemization, like had more items, you know, these fights might be going totally different. Or if it was the Oriana into the Sivir. I mean, four-man Shockwave dropped everyone's health to about a quarter health. The Sivir could follow up. The Shockwave only going to land onto Brom. He's flashing away, trying to stay tanky. But the Lissandra throws down that ultimate and goes down. Sivir actually just walks right through it. But in the meantime, though, it's all a bait because the Sejuani on that bottom side is securing more structures for the side of Poro Snacks. The rest of the team from Poro Snacks with those triple wind drakes have sped themselves away to safety. They're now defending that top lane turret and the recalls are coming through from Scum Gaming because they have to deal with that Sejuani. And that means once again, Poro Snacks are able to find themselves small objectives, that top lane second tier turret, the inhibitor in the bottom turret, and then they've just back away. They're only leading by a thousand gold, but it still feels like they have control of the game. Yeah, absolutely. It is, it is a very, very close game, right? The only major goal difference is being on Sivir in the bot lane against Jinx and Lee Sin actually having a considerable CS lead, which we never you know, got to talk about early on. You know, He is up 80 CS on J4 in this game. Almost at full build, has five out of six items now. J4 is just starting to work on his four, uh, fifth item, not even having a component yet. So, I mean, you know, it just, you saw how much pressure Lee Sin was putting down early, and it just goes to show that Lee Sin, you, you gotta, you gotta start warding for it, right? Like, the one thing, if I can say one thing early game, which I would like them, which I would like something to work on early on, is the warding. We saw close to no wards on the top side of the map at all. And it, it allowed Sejuani to just get camped by A-Man and get such a huge lead to the point where no one on Scum Gang can deal with Sejuani. It's just, she, she is 100% pure tank and does so much damage from percent percent based abilities. Exactly. Well, we'll see if they can find that because remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a best of three. So this is only game one out of a potential three game series. At the moment, Poro Snacks definitely in the lead, but there have been a couple times where they have shown some struggles. They have shown some poor choices when it comes to what they're doing. Like this Lee Sin potentially being caught out. He is able to jump to a war for the moment. The Blast Cone actually going to be able to help him get out alive, but very low health there. 
and again, Sporporo Snacks, they have to just back away, and the scaling is continuing for Scum Gang. Look at the Sivir, 318 CS, 217 on the Darius, catching up to the Sejuani. Again, it could come down to a big 5v5 fight, and if the positioning from the Sivir and Orianna is good, they could win that fight. Yeah, I'm really curious to know, like, you know, they didn't choose to pursue My the fight there, even though they, they knew they had the numbers advantage. You had the Sondra and the bot wave not running teleport. They had a numbers advantage and still, for some reason, didn't choose to pursue like, the 600 HP Lee Sin, where they could have blown the Guardian's Angel. Uh, now you have the entirety of Horus Max looking for this spot in. They're going in for the Darius. He flashes away. The Apprehend pulls Lee Sin a little bit closer. Lissandra going to go ahead and throw down her ultimate. So the Darius has absorbed a lot of pressure. And now Lissandra forcing to flash away the Lee Sin as well. Trying to jump to the Jinx. J4 is here. He's kicked away for the moment. He does, still has the Cataclysm. We'll use it on the Braum only. All the pressure on this bottom side from Poro Snacks. They're going to lose the Braum. However, the Sejuani is coming in. She wasn't there. That frontline tank for Jo was still trying to split push in the mid lane. And didn't get anything for it. Way Way too late for the fight, and now it's going to be a 4v5 fight, potentially around the Baron that's coming up in under 30 seconds. Yeah, it's up right now. I like how Always There didn't greed continuously for Akasha there, and chose to just use Cataclysm on Brawl. Let's like, get you, ourselves you know one. Yeah, exactly. Let's get ourselves one. That's all we need. Baron is now on the map, and we now have a numbers advantage. So Sejuani is backing with teleport available. Ooh, this is going to be so risky for Poro Snacks because all five members of Scum Gang are there taking down the Baron and Poro Snacks are actually just going to let it go. They're not even worried about it. They're instead going to focus on the Elder that is up. Lee Sin going ahead and starting it. However, Scum Gang could try to come down and collapse on this team that's already started up the Elder Drake. They know that with four stacks, four dragons, and this Elder Drake might be able to do it. Here comes the Sivir, the rest of the team from Scum Game. Let's see what they can do. Who's going to be able to get it? J4 steals the Elder Drake! And now the fight's going to break out. The Sondra going to go ahead and throw down the ultimate. The Cataclysm, sorry, the Cosmic Radiance from the Terra, avoiding all damage. They're turning. They're burning down Jeyu. There might be a tanky Sejuani, but she will still fall. Darius trying to execute the Jinx. Can't do it. The ultimate's too early. J4 still pushing them off. And look at the criticals! The bleed from Darius after the boomerang from the Sivir. Takes down the Jinx. Akasha is gone. Leeson's trying to split push. He's able to secure one inhibitor on the bottom side of the map. But it is an Elder Drake barren up side for Scum Gang. And they are doing a fantastic job in the late stages of this game. Oh, they're still going to be fighting, though. They're going to look for the Lee Sin. He's able to hop away for the moment to avoid getting stunned up. His GA will be pop, but there is no one for him to try to jump to to escape. And he's just going to be CC as Rosin will pick up the third kill for that Orianna. And they're just not even back to regain stats. They're saying, you know what? We have the numbers advantage right now. It's 5v3. Jinx is not up for another 10 seconds now. We need to take something on the map. We have Elder. We have Baron. And man, that Jarvan steal always there was perfectly oh. timed with that smite taking away the Elder Drake. Because imagine that entire fight, but with the four stacked Elder Drake on the side of Poro Snacks, it could be an entirely different game going on right now. But this game, we've got ourselves J4 stealing away the Elder Drake, opening an inhibitor in the mid lane, and Scum Gang have put their name in this game saying, we are coming back, baby. 4,000 gold lead. And we saw, you know, even though we saw how much Darius struggled in a 1v1 situation against Jeyu, we saw him this time zoning three members of Poro Snacks, right? And he ended up getting the kill on the Jinx with the bleed anyway. So, it, you know, it just goes to show, even though the 1v1 situation didn't work out well, I mean, Darius is still a wonderful team fighting champion, just like Sejuani. And he stopped dying. That was the crucial thing. He went down, I believe, three or four times in the early game before the laning phase was over on that top side. He's only died one time since then. He even has 150 gold bounty on his head. 12 assists. He's being that frontline tank that they need. And now they're looking to engage again. J4 over the wall. Is he going to find the Braum again? He just forces out the flash out of B to mana. So the Braum will get out for now. Keep in mind, though, even if Scum Gang win this game, they have to do all of this again in game number two. The Sivir speeding them forward with that ultimate. But it's the three wind drape from Poro Snacks that keeps pace with the Sivir ultimate. I've never seen that happen before. At least it is still inting again. Right? It is still back to one more time. Looking for the inhibitor. But the fight into the base of Poro Snacks. J4 ultimate. Gonna lock down Jinx for a moment. But Akash is not dead just yet. She's gonna be 
be able to get to the fountain. The bleed stack's so low, but she doesn't die. That's absolutely critical. Throws up the super mega death rocket, dropping the members of Scum Gang low. The inhibitor is down in the mid lane. Darius back to try to find the Lee Simp. He was able to escape. And despite four members with Baron pushing into the base, they don't even crack a Nexus turret. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty unfortunate. They weren't able to find the pick on Akasha there. I think the team rotated a little bit, just a tad too slow. Uh, it was really, I think it was a really good job by always there locking down, uh, locking down Akasha there. Uh, but they weren't able, if they found the kill there, I honestly think that would have been game. It would have been. I think been... they would have been able to. I think they would have been able to take that all the way forward, given that they still had Elder at the time, and they also have had Baron. We'll see where it goes. Uh, I still can't believe that triple wind drake able to basically nullify Sivir's ultimate because, again, if they had caught out the Brahmin Jinx in that mid lane with the Sivir ultimate, that could have been game right there, right? But with the triple wind drakes, they just speed their way back to the base. Jinx dropping to just pixels of that health bar, but gets just enough health and gets onto the fountain, stays alive, and is making sure, make sure that Poro Snacks doesn't lose any more structures in their base. And where we are at at the moment. It's a four and a half thousand gold lead for Scum Gang, so things haven't changed that much, but it's double inhibitors open for uh, Scum Gang on the mid and bottom side, so super minions are going to be clashing here shortly. And it's also like, you know, like we would not be in a situation if the Elder Drake did not come down to a 50-50 scenario. Right, and it's why, this is why it's so crucial when you, when you know that the enemy team is coming to contest the, the you know the the epic you're on whether it's baron or dragon you need to either zone the jungler off or or have some way of guaranteeing that you know you a, a, a game plan like okay if they come we keep this epic at let's say 2 or 2.5k health and return on to them we kill them first and then we come back onto dragon or baron well, and at the moment, that's what Poro Snacks is doing, is they're waiting for these super minions to get to the base so that they can then turn on to the Baron. It'll be up here in less than a minute. You'll see that 30 seconds gold timer start to show up in here in just a moment. But while they have secured vision and control around the Baron, they've given it up, backing away. Because both major objectives went down around the same time, they're actually both going to show up around the same time as well. As you can see, that Elder Drake about 30 seconds behind the Baron to spawning. But Scum Gang, they step forward, they secure a little bit of vision, and then have to back away to deal with the super minions that are currently hitting on an inhibitor that is up on that bottom side. And they're trying to prevent Darius from backing here, because Darius' teleport's coming back up. So he is able to go to oh, the fight breaking out as he backs may not have been ideal, though. Alright, so Darius should be able to defend that bottom lane the, inhibitor. The main Baron! Oh, hold on. This I didn't even see that. No, that's right. Baron down to about half health here for the moment. Scum Gang may not know that it is happening. The fight, though, going to be started up. They're jumping onto who is that? I can't even see. Always there. Throwing onto the Cataclysm, but he might be just going down. His GA is popped. Cosmic Radiance keeping the Sifra alive for the moment. Subhuman staying alive with the Shockwave of the Orion. Pulling Jail off of him. The Sifra is still alive. Can now turn. Take down the Braum as well. He will fall. The Ultimates from Darius starting to come through. Lee Sin forcing to flash away. The Jinx is on the run, has the GA, finishes off the J4, and J O once again go over the back door. They are just trading between the Lee Sin and the Sichuani. Who can backdoor? But Darius has been able to recall this time. Super Mega Death Rocket from the Jinx to keep the Sivir from recalling just yet. And Sichuani, unable to get that bottom lane inhibitor, has to just recall. And Lee Sin's trying to solo the Elder? Very confusing game right now. Uh, okay, hey man, we'll see if he's successful with that. We'll get tune into uh, the Elder Drake one v one in about four minutes. Uh, we might see a result eventually. That heals. We said actually heals quite a bit. I, I think he will eventually. I mean, it, it takes him a while. We've been already on this for about 30 seconds, and he's only gotten it down to about two-thirds health I mean, there. He's getting collapsed on. Jinx is here. It's going to be a 2v3 at the moment. Darius going to come in as well. The Elder Drake down to about half. Will Scum Gang steal this Elder Drake again? No, it's going to reset. Go back to full health. Members of Scum Gang got to back away for now. However, Poro Snacks is here. Lissandra coming out of the base to defend. And their Jay bottom lane inhibitor loyalty. did go down. Will Excuse me. So there is still two inhibitors down for Scum Gang in the middle and bottom side. Yeah, that super minion that Darius wasn't able to kill before that fight started actually ended up taking that in him again.
Two inhibs down. Poro Snacks taking strides away from the inhibitor. Instead, gonna be focusing around the Baron. But now the fight's gonna start with the apprehend onto J.O. The tank, the Brawl Ultimate coming through. Cosmic's Radiance is falling. No one has died from the side of Scum Gang yet. Lissandra Ultimate gonna heal her up a little bit, but she's in that backside of the fight. She goes golden and left to the wolves. She will fall. Spooter Juan going on a rampage. And with the Lissandra down, Scum Gang can turn onto the Baron and start that up for themselves. Lee Sin's back to potentially 1v1 in the Elder Drake. They might, yeah, they might look for the other. I think this time, though, it will actually be a trade for Elder Drake. Ooh, Rosin. However, if these two, if these two members of Poros Next die here, uh, it could be bad news for them. The tanks are trying... trying yeah, okay, so the tanks were trying to just keep the side of Scum Gang busy so that they couldn't fight for the Elder Drake. That's what happened last time. They didn't want to have it happen again. And by doing that, it is now a four-stacked Elder for the side of Poro Snacks. They're going to try to collapse. The Juani's ultimate is available. Lee Sin's coming in as well. We'll see what they can do. So Juani going to go over the wall. She just needs to find one with that ultimate. Braum going to come around the corner, throw out that Q, lands onto Homie, but no one's there to respond. So Poro Snacks just start those recalls. Yeah, that Baron back <laughs> really coming in clutch there. And now it's now that we have the exact opposite situation, right? Now you have Poro Snacks running out, running around with an endless on the hunt due to the three cloud drakes <laughs> and with the elder on them. So now you, you you're gonna have to have Scum Gang's gonna have to run around uh Oh in, my in, word in defense for a little while. I didn't even think about this. A three win drake, elder buffed Jinx with get excited, her passive. Oh my gosh, she'd be a, like faster than her bullets rocketing through a fight. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see it though, because they actually have to find those kills and assists from Poro Snacks, which they have not been able to do recently. Well, there's been some skirmishing here or there. Continuously, Scum Gang are edging out with those leads. They're now a 6,000 gold lead once again. They've got that middle inhibitor back up. The super min is pushing on that bottom side, but despite Porosnax continuing to take these inhibitors with those back doors, they haven't been able to find really anything major with them. And Jinx, from the movement speed, uh, out of combat, she is sitting at 494 movement speed. That is so much movement speed. And doesn't that get doubled when uh, she's on the quick, uh, get excited? Hold on, the engage from J4. Three members, shockwave. They're going to be getting the GA off of the Jinx. Akash is going to be coming back up. Brum is already down. It's the Darius. One, two, three. Oriana finishing. One more. Darius with a triple kill. Lee Sin, amen, abandons his team and heads with the super minions into the base. Darius going to recall once again. So this might be an attempt at a base race from Amen, but he's got to back away. And despite having four drakes on this elder drake poro snacks completely with the fight and again always there perfect with the engage setting up that oriana shockwave yeah at least then still trying to find trying to get the inhibs at this point I mean, this game is over <laughs> i mean i don't think it could have stopped it anyway i mean the, the second that fight happened the game was over yeah, you might get an inhibitor. Feels good just to get a little bit extra as the Nexus will fall. Scum Gang, despite a rough early and mid game, find the team fight synergy. 426 CS, 14 kills on this Sivir. Subhuman combined with Always There and Rosin with those shockwaves on the Orianna. Absolutely decimation in the late game. And this is only game one. And really, you have to commend the engages that always there was finding in all of these different scenarios, right? He was the only trigger that Scum Gang had, but he played his role so well. Always being the initiative, seeing the, okay, there's three people, I see it, boom, pulls the trigger. Rosin's ready to follow right up. You saw so many three to four man shockwaves that just turned all these fights around. It was just honestly so well executed by Scum Gang. You really have to give them a lot of props. Absolutely. And now props as well to Poro Snacks at the beginning of the game. They had a lot of good things going for them. They're finding some roams and some synergy between especially that Lissandra and the Lee Sin in the mid lane. Akasha doing fairly solidly in the bottom lane despite being ganked a number of times by the J4. But in the end, the pressure from Scum Gang with the major 5v5 team fights were just a bit too much. So before we move into our break, I want to ask Smartest here, what do you think both teams need to do in game number two because we saw weaknesses out of both of them what they what can they do to kind of shore up those weaknesses before they meet again on the rift 
Yeah, so it kind of goes back to what I was saying uh, at the start of it, playing to your win conditions, right? So Poro Snacks, they they built a team composition around the Jinx. And like I was mentioning before, Darius should win against Sejuani unless Sejuani finds a crazy lead, which is exactly what we found happening here. More like smart itemization, but either way, a lead of some sort. Uh, even though Sejuani had that lead early on, in a team fight setting, we saw Sivir just destroying the entire team. Right, if if you have a six and one Sivir, I mean, it, it's so hard to come back from that, right? So I think I would, I w if they draft another, you know, protect the eighty carry style composition, I want to see Aman put more pressure bot instead of top. We saw Aman basically sitting on the top half of the map, bouncing between Jeu and Trish, you know, ganking top lane quite a bit. Uh, though, are though also one thing to note is they also had Vision set up for Aman pretty well in the that half of the map but leaving that aside for a minute you know we saw him back to back ganking top lane going mm -hmm. down to mid lane looking for the lissandra the lockdown lissandra provides following it up with the lease and the dragon's rage kick guaranteeing kills on oriana i think that's all great and all but if you took those same advantages and put them on the jinx i think your team calm just becomes way more powerful and it's way easier to execute off of because then, even if you have a Sejuani who's a little bit less tanky because, you know, Sejuani's not as far as ahead, you have Jinx Rockets just decimating the team the same way Sivir Boomerangs are. Indeed. Well, we'll see if they can pull that out as we are taking a quick break. We'll be right back with game number two. Don't go anywhere. Thank you all for joining. While we are on break, I didn't do this yesterday, but I want to shout out all of you amazing people that are actually coming in with those follows. There is a bunch of you. First of all, Phoenix Ice, the Almond Raw for the Twitch Prime sub, Jobo for the 305 bits today, Jakumi, Mystic UL, So So Sis Steve, Never saw 789, Cat Average, Triz ITV, Sheep II, Nizer, and La Tigris for the Twitch Prime sub for eight months. Thank you so much for that support. We'll be right back with game number two. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 